Start looking for me. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Oh, sorry. Anybody's mic? Where's the mic? Hello, hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. Welcome to The Place in London. Welcome to The Place Prize. I am Tim Wood. I'm part of the communications team here at The Place, and like my colleagues here beside me, we're all in our best bib and tucker because this is just about the most exciting night of our year. It is the final final of The Place Prize, and we're in over the next two and a half hours or so, we're going to see four pieces of brilliant contemporary dance, and at the end of that, we're going to find out which of those is going to take home The Place Prize, and with it, £25,000. So, welcome. I hope you can stay with us for that whole two and a half hours. This will be the final final of the Place Prize for Dance, sponsored by Bloomberg. I'm now in the em empty auditorium at the Robin Howard Dance Theatre. Very shortly, the people who are waiting outside are going to be coming in here, and the show is about to begin. And guiding them through the evening will be the two gentlemen here with me. This is Peter Laycock and Chris Thompson, who are part of the creative learning and teaching team here at the place, and they are also our, our compares for the evening. So, Peter, tell me, what does being a compare of the Place Prize involve? Well, as well as welcoming the audience to the theatre, uh, it's our job to guide them through the voting at the end for the audience prize. So, how does the audience prize work then? What are, what are people voting for? Well, each night the four pieces have been performed and the audience use an electronic keypad to choose their favourite. Uh, the audience's favourite piece each evening wins £1,000. And how's that vote been going so far? Um, it's been going um, very well. Um, one company have benefited quite a lot from that. Um, and another choreographer has done well out of it as well. That's great. So, Chris, how has the experience of being the compare worked for you? Has it been all plain sailing? There been any hiccups along the way? I'm constitutionally incapable of doing it the same way two nights running, although we do have a script, but we're trying to make it an informal and a, and a welcoming event, so you know things can change. But no, it's, it's been great. The audiences, I think, this year have been very warm. They've been very thoughtful. Uh, some, night time, some nights they've had a few more cocktails than other nights, so it can be more lively. But no, it's been a good experience, and I enjoy it every time I do it. Yeah, what, how would you generally gauge the reaction of the audience? I know there have been a lot of new audiences coming to see the work here. Yes, uh, we started asking whether anyone was new to the place th that night. I'll do it again tonight. Uh, and there were new people every single night. Um, I think they've been quite thoughtful. The pieces are very, very different. And I think we and, and the programme notes, in a sense, try to encourage people to think about the, the world that the piece is trying to create and to try and enter into that. And I think people have been doing so. They talk in between the pieces. They talk when they're, you know, in between the, the, the vote, before the vote. And uh, from what I overhear in the bar, I think there's a lot of conversation about dance, which is what we like. Now, that right brain, left brain stuff that I've heard you talk about in some of your introductions, what, what are you getting at with that? Well, yes, I, I'm not sure if I'll say that tonight, but we live in a society that's very sort of logocentric. We're talking now, aren't we, using words. And the left brain is what we use all day at work, most of us. Um, it's very into detail. It's very analytic. But when you're looking at dance, you need th the right brain skills like pattern recognition, like empathy, uh, it's the right brain that um, reads body language, it's the right brain that sees the overall and not just the detail. So you need a bit of both, and I think when you're watching dance it's a good idea to give the old left brain a bit of a rest and let the, the right brain take over a bit. Great, so there are four works tonight. I know as compares it's your duty to be completely impartial, but perhaps do you have any personal favourites? Is there someone you're really hoping takes away the prize tonight? 
I'm going to be very diplomatic and say I had a clear favourite at the start of the process uh, and then having watched the pieces several times now um, and learnt a lot more about them online, I couldn't really say I've got a clear favourite. I'd be more than happy for any of the four to win the final prize. How about you, Chris? Well, it's a great privilege for us to be able to watch the pieces over and over again, and, and you, they yield up more every time you see them. So I think you, you, you come to love all of them in a sense because you start to see the depths in all of them. Um, my thoughts have changed. I think I do have two that stand out over the other two, and perhaps I do have a favour that I'm not going to divulge. Um, I've really enjoyed watching them reveal the layers. It's been fascinating. Well, that's great. Well, good luck with your comparing duties tonight. I look forward. We'll all be seeing you on stage very shortly. So in just a moment, the audience are going to be coming in and then we're ready to see the four pieces that are going to be competing for the place prize tonight. Uh, you can, uh, you're watching the live stream now, hopefully at theplaceprize.com slash live. Also on that page, you can download the program notes. And so if you want to read more about the works, if you want to hear about where the performers have come from, there's also supporting articles and there's information about our judges. You can find that all in that download. So just before we start um, with the performance, we're going to go and look back to an earlier part of this process, because it was in September last year that the 16 works that were commissioned for the Plays Prize had their premieres here at the place, and it was from those 16 that the four that we'll see tonight were chosen. So we're going to look back now at a little bit of film about how those pieces were, came to the stage, um, what the experience was like for the artists who were involved in making them, and how those four finalists were chosen. What I'm looking for is to be surprised. When I'm watching a piece, I like to see a sense of narrative. What you look for initially is that idea, whatever sparked it off, what, what was the kind of the creative essence. And then, of course, then how they manage to structure that, sort of choreographically, how they're crafting it. And the work that is able to reach uh, the audience, to touch the audience, to um, leave some emotions. The judges will choose three works and uh, a fourth one will be chosen by the audience. So this is very exciting. How do I feel about it being a competition? Um, I'm at one with it. I mean, I think essentially I've gone and made a piece that I wanted to make, discounting the fact that it's a competition. Um, hopefully the audience takes to it and um, we get a couple of votes. I don't know if I want to be there <laughs> when people are voting. I want to make up my mind later. I'm not really thinking about the voting right now, I think I'm gonna, um, I'm just gonna perform the piece. I am scared about the audience response, but at the same time I think it's good to respect other people's uh, view, other people's taste. All right, are we ready? Voting is open, please vote now. It's a, an incredible opportunity for there to be a sort of a democratic response to a piece of work. So I think it's a really great idea. Well, it feels more interactive, isn't it? It feels like you have actually some say in who makes it through to the final. I don't think you can come here with preset ideas. I think it's you know, whatever excites you on the night. Well, democracy is the best of the worst. So uh, we will vote. And I'll probably vote for who I found funny, actually. Oh. Well, it's, it's my choice. <laughs> For those who don't know me, my name's Eddie, I'm the director of the theatre here. I was also chair of the panel of judges, uh, which is why I have this job. Okay, uh, the finalists for the place prize. H2, dance. <laughs> Ava Rakatcha. <laughs> Ricardo Pascarini. <laughs> and Rick Nodi. This is the Place Prize for Dance Live. This is the final, final performance and the audience are just starting to come into the auditorium and take their seats. 
Chris and Peter will be getting ready to introduce the show and let the audience know about their, the part that they're going to play tonight. So we'll be seeing four works in total tonight. There is Rick Nodine's Dead Gig, Athletes by Riccardo Buscarini, Ava Recatcher's The Wishing Well, and Duet by H2 Dance. There'll be gaps between each piece while the stage is reset, and in those gaps, we'll be hearing from some of the people who ha help make the place prize happen, as well as all hearing audience reactions. After the last piece, the audience will vote for their favorite work, who will win a prize of a thousand pounds, and then we'll be set for a short ceremony where we find out who the judges have chosen to win the overall place prize of 25,000 pounds. Do let us know what you think of the show. You can post questions and comments on facebook.com slash the place or on Twitter using the hashtag place prize. So I think it'll be a few minutes just while the audience come in and take their seats and then Chris and Peter will introduce the evening. So I'm going to hand over to that now.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the final final of the place prize. My name is Chris. And I'm Peter. And we, we are, are your compares for this, this evening. evening. <laughs> welcome, thank you. Welcome to the Place Theatre. Is there anyone, anyone here, I see some familiar faces, who's never been to the Place Theatre before? <gasps> wonderful, Excellent. wonderful. I'll buy your cocktail in the interval. You're very, very welcome. Um, you may also know that we are live streaming tonight's performance, so can I wish a particular welcome to our online audience as well. So, what's it all about? Place Prize. Together with the sponsors of the prize, Bloomberg, we at The Place are passionate about the importance of making new work and getting people to talk about it. That's why we created the prize, and that's why we're still working with Bloomberg on this, the fifth edition. Peter, how did we get here? Can we have some facts and figures? Yeah. Earlier last year, we invited UK-based choreographers to send us their idea for a new short dance work. We had 208 applications. Eventually, 16 of those were selected, and with the support of Bloomberg, were made into new dance works. Last September, our panel of judges and our audience selected four of these to be our place prize finalists. And that's why we're here tonight. Indeed, these four pieces have been being performed over the last 10 days and straight after the performance tonight uh, the winner of the place prize will be announced and the winner therefore of £25,000. <laughs> Indeed, woo! Especially in the dance world, woo! Well, as well as watching and hopefully enjoying tonight's performance, our audience here in the theatre have got a really important role to play because at the end of the performance we'll be asking you to use one of these to vote for your favourite piece of the evening. The winner of the audience vote will win tonight's audience prize of a thousand pounds. Okay, finally, almost, um, a word about how the, the evening is going to run. Four pieces, as we said, each about 20 minutes long and very different. They each try to create a very different world. So in between, in order to let our fantastic technical crew reset the stage, there will be some gaps. So after the first piece and the third piece, there will be a pause, but just a short pause. So if you can, stay where you are, read the program, talk to your neighbour about the, the work you've seen. After the second piece, there will be an interval. And actually, for that big reset, we need you to clear the auditorium and go off to the bar. But luckily, we've invented, or our bar staff have invented, five uh, special place prize cocktails. So I can warmly recommend those. The bar staff, too, will welcome you with open arms. But when you go, remember to take your ticket stub with you, because you won't get back in without it. Obviously, we're sold out. Our ushers are charm itself, but they are, how should I put it, uncompromising. And many of them are dancers and have very strong arms. So in order to avoid any unpleasantness, <laughs> take your ticket stub with you. And as long as you haven't collaborated in the making of any of tonight's pieces, make sure you collect your keypad so you can join in with the vote at the end. Also, please take this opportunity to turn off your mobile phone. People reaching for their bags, <laughs> double checking. Uh, no taking of photographs or video tonight, please. We'll be back at the end to guide you through the voting. But for now, enjoy the show. Enjoy the show, thank you. into a band, a rock band, 20 years after their heyday. Why was I 20 years late? Founding members of the Grateful Dead, Garcia and Weir, were immersed in the American folk music revival of the 1950s and early 60s. But when I was a teenager in the 80s, there was no folk music revival. Ron Pigpen McKernan was a serious disciple of blues and soul. The three of them formed Mother McCree's Uptown Jug Champions, and they played bluegrass. Bluegrass. In the 80s, we had U2, Run DMC, we had the Talking Heads, R.E.M. The Smiths, we had LL Cool J. 
In 65, they recruited a rhythm section, Phil Lesh and Bill Kreutzmann. They renamed themselves the Warlocks, and they followed the Beatles and the Rolling Stones into electric rock and roll. But in the 80s, we had Prince. He was young, good looking. He could dance, sing, play many instruments very well, and he wore fantastic clothes. At that time, the Grateful Dead still had Jerry Garcia. He was my mom's age, but he looked a lot older. <laughs> he was overweight. He always wore the same triple XL black t-shirt to every show. He too could play many instruments very well. But if you were a serious Grateful Dead fan, a real deadhead, you had to make peace with one more thing. Without any further ado, the Grateful Dead. Jerry Garcia could not sing. <laughs> They discovered another East Coast band that had the same name. Garcia flipped open a folklore dictionary and randomly placed his finger on the entry, Grateful Dead. The new band name was born 
in what Garcia described as a truly weird moment. The acid tests were a series of parties held by Kesey in the San Francisco area in 65 and 66. They combined music, light and film projection, dance, electronic sound, and the use of the then legal psychedelic drug, LSD. Through LSD, the dead became aware of the infinite possibilities for expression, 
when imagination was given free reign. Playing live, they didn't improvise, with blues, folk, jazz, feedback, and other sonic experiments for hours on end. That was a real moment, and you knew deep down whether 
it was real or not. And you knew when you went to a show and you never dropped in. Yeah, you know, okay, maybe you danced, maybe you enjoyed a few songs, but it didn't happen that night. And you knew the nights that it did happen. Dancing at a dead show is just a social expression of devotion to the band and to this idea of being high. That's all fine, but that's just about placing yourself within the scene. The interesting thing is that sometimes it's real. You can actually disappear into the dancing and into the music. In 1995, when Jerry died, I didn't mourn. I wasn't a deadhead anymore. I had a different life. I lived in London. But it really struck me how often and for how many years the dead played live. Jerry's voice showed those years. On some nights it was cracked and weak, and on some nights it was strong. The dead weren't about perfection. They were about playing each gig. On some nights they dropped into a kind of transcendent communication with one another. And on some nights they didn't, they were just a band. I think the deadheads bought into the chance of being there on the nights when that happened and being transported with the dead.
So I'm Lindsay Winship, dance editor of Time Out, and while they're resetting the stage for the next piece, I'm going to have a chat with Eddie Nixon, who's the director of the theatre here at the place. Eddie, how's this year's place prize been going for you? It's been a really exciting uh, one. It's the fourth uh, edition I've been working here at the place for. I think this year uh, the, the debate has been perhaps uh, some of the most balanced and weighted and uh, um, yeah, uh, sort of almost argumentative about people's favourites than I've ever seen before. Um, but that's all part of it, really, is to try and get that discussion going. So I've really enjoyed that bit of it and the kind of conversation that goes on outside the theatre just as much as what's on stage. So has that conversation been going on amongst the judges, the audience, the public? Well, everyone, I hope, who comes, uh, certainly amongst the judges. Um, certainly uh, hear people talking in the bar and in the performances. Um, it's great to sit in the auditorium some night and just be aware of the conversation that's going on around you. Um, and also I, I notice you know, the, the critics talking about it in the papers and then all expressing really clearly their opinions about who should win and who their favourites are. So um, that's really enjoyable to see and that you know, new dance is being talked about in that way. So we're going to find out the winner tonight. What kind of things have the judge, do you think the judges have been looking for? I think they look for the same things as everybody does. Uh, I think they react on instinct. Um, so a, a, an initial feeling about something they see. Um, the judges come watch the pieces twice. That gives them a, a different perspective to a lot of people. So beyond that initial instinct, um, they get to look a bit deeper and perhaps interrogate what they're seeing on stage uh, a little bit more rigorously than most people get the opportunity to. And then the conversation, of course, they sit down and talk for a few hours with each other about the things they've seen. Um, but they're really looking at the whole production on the stage. Uh, so choreography, of course but also the performances, the direction, the ideas behind it, how all those things are pulled together um, and, and how that thing realises itself you know, at this stage of the competition. And has there been a lot of disagreement amongst the judges? Yeah, I mean, of course they disagree about some things. Um, I have to say that this, the, the, the judges in this uh, final particularly were really good at uh, listening to each other. Um, I have to say that coming back to watch a second time, uh, how they felt about some of the work shifted. Uh, which I thought was fascinating um, for me. Uh, as chair of the judges, I'm mostly sitting there and, and letting them do the talking. Um, uh, ultimately, I think they, as we'll find out uh, hopefully later, um, I think they're fairly clear about what they prefer and what they've enjoyed and, and what they were most excited about this year. Aha, uh -huh, I see, interesting. And just to tell me quickly, who, the judges don't all come from the dance world, do they? Who, who's, um, who's judging? Uh, so the, the five judges we had this year, there was one, uh, someone from a dance expert, who's Roberto Casarotto, who works for the uh, Opera State of Veneto Festival in Venice. Uh, Bonnie Greer, uh, playwright and author, was one of our judges. Uh, Susanna Eastburn, who is the uh, chief executive of Sound and Music. Uh, David Lan, who's the artistic director of the Young Vic. Margot Heller, who's the director of South London Gallery. Uh, is that five? That was five. <laughs> <laughs> so that's quite a mix. And of course, it's not just the panel who get to pass their judgment because the audience get to vote every night as well. How has that been going and has there been a clear favourite? Uh, just about, uh, although it has been split, the audience vote. Um, great to watch. Uh, two of the pieces have shared the audience votes between them up until now. Uh, it's been great to see that happen and find the audience have had different preferences different night and of course these are live pieces so a lot hinges on the performances from one night to the next and all the performers uh, constantly playing teasing out finding new things in the works that they're performing and that affects how it comes across the audience and I think affects the audience vote and that's great to see as well it's, it's live work and that's part of the excitement. Can you tell us which two pieces have been the favourite? Yeah, uh, they're ones that you haven't seen yet uh, so, uh, and uh, the, the two pieces in the second half of the evening performance are the ones that the audiences have, have enjoyed so far. So uh, keep watching and look forward to that for later on. Yeah. yeah, right, look forward to seeing those. And I suppose you could think of the Place Prize as a bit of a barometer of what's going on in UK contemporary dance right now. Have you noticed any sort of trends or developments in the pieces that were put forward or have been made this year? Um, I think there are so many trends in UK contemporary dance. Uh, it was interesting, I was talking to a choreographer the other day uh, and saying the same thing, who just recently arrived here and noticing the variety of work. Um, I think it's the strength of the ideas underneath the work that's really important this year. The performances, what you see on the stage is important, but what's behind them has uh, been really, uh, I've really noticed the taste of that in all the works, not just now, but also in the semi-final stage of the competition. Right, I think.
not being too specific there. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. That's your job, isn't it? To say. <laughs> Yes, that, that is probably my job as a critic, absolutely. But um, you got to see all the... How many entries were there altogether? There were 208 entries this year, which is the most we'd ever had. That was another exciting thing. Good to see that it's still such an exciting competition and so many people still want to take part. Great. Well, I think it's about ready for the next piece now. It's Ricardo Buscarini's Athletes.
So that's the first half of this evening's presentation of the Place Prize for Dance, sponsored by Bloomberg. I hope you're enjoying it. We've seen so far Dead Gig, which is choreographed and performed by Rick Nodine, devised by Rick together with Jamie McCarthy, and just now Ricardo's Buscarini's Athletes, which is performed by Harriet Bone, Victoria Hoyland, and Carolina Krakowska. The audience are now heading out for an interval, and the, perform the performance will resume in around 20 minutes' time. We're going to see the works by Ava Rakacha and H2 Dance in the second half. Coming after that, up after that will be the announcement of which of these four pieces has won the Place Prize. During this interval, we'll be hearing from some of the Place Prize audience about what they think of the show so far. But before we do, we thought we'd take you back to the very start of this process. It was just about a year ago that 16 artists were told that they'd be commissioned to make works for this edition of the Place Prize. And we filled them as they were starting out on their Place Prize journey and during the process of making the pieces last summer. The Place Prize is a big contemporary dance competition. Every two years we commission 16 new original dance works and they compete for a first prize of £25,000. It thrusts short new dance works and new names that people might not necessarily have heard of into the limelight and I think that's really important. So at this stage we have just commissioned 16 pieces to be made. Come September they're going to be performed in front of a jury and uh, that jury are going to pick three works to go forward to a final and the audience are going to pick the other work. And then those four pieces uh, will be seen next April, so April 2013, and one of those will be selected to be the next Place Prize winner. Being selecting in the Place Prize means a lot to me because it's uh, one of the biggest events. I'm very honoured and flattered to be here. To be part of the Place Prize this year is so, so exciting. Years have gone before and I thought, oh, I don't think I could, I don't think I could, but yeah, I'm just completely, completely over the moon that I'm part of it this year. It's really exciting to be in the semi-finals. I like the idea of it being new dance and kind of the forefront of dance, whatever that means. I just like the fact that that's sort of what it's about. To be part of the Place Prize, uh, obviously it's a great opportunity to make a new piece of work, but it's also, for me, it's actually a, a validation as well. Uh, I've only recently started working as a choreographer. So it's been quite important. And I think the other thing that is really great is that it's judged on your idea. You submit an idea, it's judged anonymously. So it means that the idea that you think has got legs, you think is really interesting. Someone else actually goes, yeah, we think this is really interesting. And actually it's interesting enough to give you some money to make it. Somebody believes in your idea and they say, here's some some income to be able to make that thing happen. It's like, I just really want to make sure that I can do it, because I can see it in my head, but there's a gulf between that and the actual practicality of doing it. What's going to be difficult about being in the place prize is not letting the competition get in the way of mm, us making what it is that we want to make, you know, and not let that fear of having people judge you and, you know, stop us or hinder us in sort of being brave and really you know, just being true to what it is that we want to do. I don't have any problem with competition because I think it's fun for the audience. I think the, the audience is actually having fun voting and it's something they know well from other media. The audience has a lot of power in terms of like the voting system. Oh, I'm not thinking about winning. Um, I'm not, not so sure I'm sure about thinking about getting to the finals, but um, I mean, if I did, it'll be a great accomplishment for where I'm coming from. Even just being in the last 16 for me is quite a big deal. So anything here on in is a, is a bonus and we'll just see what happens. You make it work. <laughs> it's always a big struggle to make a piece. It's tough because you, you start with a vision or some kind of stimulus and then you create something and there is always a gap between what your intention is and what the material available is. And together, yes, yes, 
Yes. Can Caro be more here towards that point? It's an emotionally challenging because it has a lot to do with decisions. It is a decision-making process, the creative process. So you're always facing, you know, the challenge of saying yes to one thing, no to the other. I know the kind of feeling and journey that I would like to create for the audience. That's what I know. But I don't know how it's going to look like. The process that I'm going through for this piece is creating lots of movement and then we're playing with how we might organise that and structure it. We're working with lots of different ways in. So we've been working with physical responses to words, also kind of looping through moving, writing, drawing and kind of then working from those drawings. So lots of different ways to make material. When I come to the studio, I have a set of images that I like to explore. I write a lot and I, the writing process includes also uh, task devising. So the task is a translation between the image to the movement. So it's about writing, devising image, devising task, giving the task to the dancer, producing movement and then composition. I just want to have like a, like a hammer, like a hammer in, in the face of the spectators, a hammer of actions like this. You go through many, many emotional states. And, but it is very exciting. So you get very excited at the beginning and then usually there is a moment of crisis in between and then you find your way, you know, through the challenge, you find a way, you find an answer. I'm quite a dance nerd, really, and just get very excited by dance and dancers. So it's been really thrilling and exciting this first week where we've been making and generating. Then I think there's slight nervousness about, wow, how do I draw that together? How do I really use what we've got in a way that will end up on the stage? So that's the point that we're at now, trying to make that happen, fingers crossed. Oh, it's just being interviewed. We're being interviewed. 
Are you having a good evening? I am having a good evening. I'm, I'm, I'm loving being here at the place tonight, the place prize. And what brought you here tonight? Well, actually, my friends brought me a ticket, so I wouldn't have thought of coming on my own, but I'm glad I came, and uh, it's already quite interesting. I mean, I'm a big friend of Stephen Fry anyway, but it would be interesting even without that, so, yeah. Are you enjoying it? I am. I am. It's uh, challenging, but... Um, I don't, I don't it, you kind of just have to let it wash over you and then feel what you feel and come back to it afterward and go, oh, what just happened here? You know? yeah. Do you have a favourite to continue to see? Well, um, Rick Nodine, is that his name? He's a Philly boy, he's from my area of Philadelphia, so I have to like him. But the other one, technically, quite superior. I think that as much as I like to support the hometown, if you have to tell me the story, then it doesn't stand on its own. So the narrative didn't work for me in the beginning. And the, the dancing was great, the dancing was great. And the shoe, and the, it's very interesting stuff. But technically, the, the second one just really, you're breathless watching it. Like, it's so slow, and it's just kind of unfolding. You have no idea where it's going. And then it spins into this place that, you're just along for the ride, so. So, can't say I have a favorite, though. <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
place. No, I've never been. I've, I'm aware of that kind of dance before, you know, kind of improvisation and temperance. Do you think you've come back again to the place? Yeah, I think it's good. Yeah, I like the variations of different dances.
This is the Place Prize for Dance, sponsored by Bloomberg, coming to you live from the place in London. The audience is coming back in for the second half. I can quickly tell you that if you have at home gin, peach schnapps, soda, lemon juice and lime cordial, those are the ingredients of a Place Surprise. That's one of the cocktails that they're serving in the bar that the audience have been enjoying during this interval. So if you want to mix yourself up one of those up quickly, uh, we'll get ready for the second half. So two more pieces in this second half before we find out who's going to win the £25,000 prize. Uh, and remember to let us know what you think about the show so far on Facebook slash The Place or on Twitter using the hashtag Place Prize. So I think we're just about ready now for the second half as the last few audience members start taking their seats. And we're going to see a work choreographed by Ava Rakacha and performed by Martha Pasakopoulou. And it's entitled The Wishing Well. I guess that's all you want.
This is my wishing well. First wish. This is my wishing well. Second wish. This is my wishing well. Third wish. One time, two times, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times, eight times, nine times, She is sitting in the corner again. Her name is Martha. She's only a child. One times one is one, one times two is two, one times three is But she's already stubborn. Padre nuestro que estás en los cielos, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino, hágase tu voluntad así en la tierra como en el cielo. Pan nuestro de cada día, danos de hoy y perdónanos nuestras deudas así como nosotros perdonamos a nuestros deudores y no nos dejes caer en la tentación, mas líbranos del mal. Amén. Wish, 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 wish. Martha suddenly stops. This is Martha.
She has been long wishing. This is my wishing well. First wish. This is my wishing well. Second wish. This is my wishing well. A woman stands in the center of the space. She makes a big gesture with her arm. And then she draws four straight lines downwards. She circles her hands and bounces, turning around herself. She turns the bouncing into a frantic movement of the arms, then she waves her arms, drawing a circle, going down the circle, up and down, up and down, down and up, 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 shaking her arms, flapping her arms to the side, she keeps flapping, flapping, flapping it stronger, stronger, now she's throwing her arms in front of her, in front of her, and she's Beating the floor, she's beating the ground, she beats the ground, beats the ground, beats the ground, beats the ground, and she extends her arms out and gathers them back in, out, 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 in. She's slowing down the motion and she's now dropping her hands on the floor. One times one is one, one times two is two, one times three is three, one times four is four, one times five is five, one times six is six, one times seven is seven, one times eight is eight, one times nine is nine, one times ten is... One times ten is... One times ten is... When Martha learned the multiplication tables, she never got to number 10. What Martha doesn't know is that her mother met her father on the 10th of October. And since, she decided that number 10 was a bad omen.
Number 10 was simply never mentioned. There are all these memories of things learned by heart, which are part of Martha's world. They float around her at all times, and she can pick them and go back in time. She obviously didn't do the right thing at the right time. It looks, it looks very clear from here where we are. She's not going to get it. Her rituals are many and varied. In order to get a direct line with the gods, she will accuse, she will betray, she will conceal, she will defend, she will expect, she will forget, she will grant, she will hate, she will imagine, she will judge, she will kill, she will lie, she will meet, she will negate, she will object, she will pray, she will question, she will regret, she will subdue, she will tell, she will use, she will vow, she will wait, she will yell. She will show, she will reveal, she will subdue, she will yield, she will fight, she will regret, she will conceal, she will beg, she will pray, she will repent, she will betray, she will entertain, she will find, she will hide, she will dance, she will dance, she will dance, she will dance again. And again.
is uh, right here, right with us. She brought her wish. She's she's got it there. She's got it ready. It's really well packed, compact, solid, well shaped. It's definitely rounded, really rounded, and she's she's ready. She's ready to go with it. She's 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 taking it to the right, and then she's she's, she's taking it to the left, and then she's taking it to to, to, the, to the back and to the center. It's in front of her. She's 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 giving it the final touches, and then she's. Not wishing well. Here we go again. So we've got another short pause before the final piece and I'm joined by John ZD, um, b-boy performer, director and former judge on the Praise Prize. John Z, you were on the panel for the semi-finals. How was that experience for you? It was great. I felt I was part of a really good panel of judges and, um, and it wasn't too difficult. We didn't argue and I guess I was slightly disappointed about that but I think we all got along um, swimmingly and we all respected each other's opinion even though it differed quite a lot. Yeah, you didn't argue, but you must have disagreed. What kind of things did you debate? Well, I guess there was like form versus narrative and stuff like that, and the way in which some people use text. Um, but I think that, you know, the judges, the, the panel of judges reflected generations. Um, and there were certain things that I'd say, things like back in the day with people like the amazing Siobhan Davis, you know what I mean, and her view on dance it was just really rich to be reinformed about that again you know what I mean but um, I was also aware of how different um, I think of stuff do you know what I mean but that no, was a really good panel Sarah Crompton love her love her <laughs> a lot of love in the room <laughs> um, so you and the and the judges put through the first three pieces that we've already seen but the fourth piece which we're about to see was the audience prize yes. yeah um, and I think we're almost ready for it but just tell me those first three pieces what was it that stood out about those three pieces um i think rick's piece um his love of music and it was just really lovely to see how music is really important in contemporary life we kind of forget about that sometimes um and you know he's a deadhead and that passion shone through 
Um, I really love the second piece because I think that um, it's form and style and use of movement and, and economic use of movement was really, really good. One word on the third piece. And one word on the third piece. Um, beautiful performer, absolutely amazing. Great, thanks very much, John Z. Right, we're now just about ready for the fourth piece, which is H2 Dancers Duet. Good evening, good evening. My name is Hannah and I'm Heidi and tonight we're going to perform a piece called Duet. That's right, we're going to perform a piece called Duet that we prepared especially for tonight. Especially for this evening. And it's called Duet because it's a piece for two people. Not one. It's not a solo. Is it Heidi? No, it's not. No. And it's not a trio either. No, it's not. Because you can't have three people in a duet, can you? No, you can't. Shall we start? Let's start. Heidi and I have just been to couple therapy. Haven't we, Heidi? Yes, we have. It was great. Such a wonderful process. Wasn't it, Heidi? It was brilliant. We learned so much about ourselves, about each other. A truly life-changing experience it was. Wasn't it, Heidi? Yeah, it was life changing. And I learned. What did you learn then, Hannah? I learned that I'm not a very good friend, didn't I, Heidi? That's right. I learned that I'm not a very good friend and it was a very, very useful thing for me to learn. Wasn't it, Heidi? Yes, it was. I learned that I'm slightly self-absorbed. Not quite attentive enough to your needs, am I, Heidi? No, you're not. And I primarily think about myself, don't I, Heidi? That's right. Why don't you tell them about the crying then? Oh yeah, 
That's a good idea. Let's talk about the crying. I cried, didn't I, Heidi? Who did? I was crying, weeping, wailing, sobbing, blobbering. Tears just streaming down my face. I was on the floor, shaking, shivering. My mascara was okay, smudged up. That's enough. Okay. Let's do some dancing. Oh, yeah. That's a good idea. What would you like to do, Heidi? Let's do a hip and leg dance. Oh, nice.
had a breakdown, didn't you, Heidi? That's right. You had a breakdown and I wasn't quite there for you at that time, was I, Heidi? No, you weren't. I wasn't such a great companion right then, was oh, I? Can you move the back of it? Sorry. No, because you were in your bubble, weren't you, Hannah? Yes, I was. You were in a blissful state. In a state of delight. Yeah. That must have felt nice. Did. You were getting cuddles and you were looked after, weren't you, in your beautiful house with this amazing furniture that you have and those really great door handles from John Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> Philip Stark, actually. <laughs> nice. Yeah, and you were going for coffee mornings, weren't you, with your yummy mummy friends and yeah. you were having such a great time. Must have felt like being on ecstasy. Yeah, I did. <laughs> like being in paradise, yeah. in uh, Nirvana. Yeah. And I was doing the admin, wasn't I? Yes. <laughs> yes, you were, weren't you? I was doing the Excel sheets. That's right. And you're organising. And you like organising, don't you, Heidi? <laughs> okay, Joe, make this really dramatic. I was doing the budgets and the number crunching. 10,000, 3,000, 2 pounds 50, in kind, cash flow, overflow, no flow, and the shortfalls, yes, I was doing the shortfalls, and the images I was redesigning, resizing into high resolution and low resolution, planning the work, promoting the tour, engaging the public, more audiences, Better audiences, bigger audiences, new ideas, bolder ideas, a new concept. And I was demonstrating how work fits into the current criteria and the, the long term implication on the organization and the successful management of the company. And I was achieving and delivering all the aims yes, aims, objectives, targets, hit my targets. Targeting people, affecting people, affecting the arts. Yes, that's it, Harry. You can do it. Meet those goals, meet those targets, evaluate, revaluate, escalate. Up you get. First thing in the morning, drinking Nescafe. More Nescafe. Late at night, answering emails. More emails. Drowning in emails, Harry. But you can, you can achieve those goals through ambition. Ambitious, suspicious, free. Fancy free, freedom, freedom for all, freedom to fall, let me fall onto a seat, bumps on seats, bigger bumps on seats, bumps on streets, street dance, street talk, yes, now you're talking, Heidi, come on, work it, office work, community work, outreach work, access, access and diversity, Heidi, you can diversify, then you can go further, more business planning, more strategic planning, more value for money, and above all, Heidi, your legacy. Wow.
heard you speak that much, Heidi. That's right. Remember those evenings down the pub? You staring into your pint glass. Not a word. And look at you now. Look at me now. The international tours, far away from home. Just you and me. Silent as a mouse, you were. And look at you now, letting it all out. You and me, Heidi, we like salt and pepper, aren't we, Heidi? I'm salt. You and me, we like Barbie and Ken, aren't we, Heidi? You and I like Tom and Jerry, like Simon and Garfunkel. You and I, we like cheese and onion, aren't we, Heidi? We like Gilbert and George, Thelma and Louise. You and me, we're like fruit and fibre, like Marks and Spencers. You and I, we like Cameron and Clegg, like Charles and Diana, aren't we, Heidi? That's right. You and me, Heidi. You and I. The two of us. Me and you. Hannah and Heidi. H2 dance. Shall we end it there then? Okay. That's a good idea. Let's finish here. Marco, you can take the lights out now. chosen by our live audience here tonight. Now audience, you'll, you'll have noticed that there aren't copious um, programme notes about the pieces uh, in the programme, and that's because we believe the pieces should primarily communicate their intention on stage. But if you would like to know more about tonight's pieces, more about the process behind the prize, or to find out a bit more about the 16 semi-finalists, just go along to theplaceprize.com, there's lots to watch and to read there. And can we take this opportunity to say a big thank you to Bloomberg, who support the Place Prize and have made the creation of all 16 pieces and the prizes we award possible. So we're nearly ready for the audience vote. Your handset should be lit up. It should be flashing green, yes? It's flashing red. Put your hand up and we'll get you another one. But I think we're about ready to, to go. And in a moment, we're simply going to ask you to press the number for your favourite piece from tonight. First of all, let's cast our minds back and have a quick recap. So, if your favourite piece this evening was Rick Nodine's Dead Gig, you will press one. If it was the world of Riccardo Buscarini's athletes that most appealed to you, you will press two. If our third piece this evening, Ava Recatches the Wishing Well, captured your imagination, you will press three. And of course, you will press four if it was H2 Dance's duet that tickled your fancy. So it's very simple. So, 
Can they, can they uh, press the number repeatedly and record lots of votes that way? You can press the number as many times as you like, but you can't cheat. The technology is far cleverer than that. So the computer will only register the last number you press before voting closes. OK, so at least it means you can change your mind. So if you press the number, you want to change your mind, you can press another one. It will only record the, one, the last one you press before we close the voting. OK? And you can discuss it among yourselves. As we said, we like people to talk about that. So please feel free. We'll give you plenty of time for the vote. So, so please press your audience vote winner number now. So go. We'll just keep an eye on the total votes cast. There's plenty of time. Glad to hear there's a bit of hilarity in the conversation. There's a small argument, Peter, but I think it's an argument about aesthetic principles. How are we doing? I'm stuck. I think there's some thinking going on, which is good. How are we doing? Have we got on to... You're not trying to text the babysitter on it, are you, no? Um, so, how are we doing? Anyone, who's still thinking? Anyone still thinking? Yes, take your time. There's absolutely enough to carry on the rest of you. You may speak. You, you, may, you may discuss production matters or aesthetic principles or anything you like. How are we doing? Still thinking. Okay, just show me your hand. We're going to close the voting quite soon, but anyone still pondering? Anyone still debating? No? I think we're good to go. All right, we're going to close the voting. Yeah? Yeah. Five, Five four, four, three, two, two one. one. Voting, voting is closed. closed. Thank you, ladies and gents. Now, a little bit of number crunching up there while we calculate the results and just recheck it. So I just remind you that very shortly we're going to be announcing the winner of the 2013 place prize right here on this very stage. And can we take this opportunity to give all of tonight's choreographers, performers, our live stream, front of house and wonderful technical team here in the theatre a big round of applause. thumbs up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the winner of tonight's audience prize with a total score ooh, of 33% is... So, if you could pass them from the middle out to the edge of the road, that'd be great. And as soon as that's done, they'll exchange it for a glass of some refreshment for you. And if you then stay with us, enjoy your drink, uh, the announcement will be made soon. Our job is done, and we thank you very much. We'll join you later in the country. Okay, now we're literally moments away from finding out who's going to win the place prize for dance sponsored by Bloomberg. And I've been joined here by the dance critic, Graham Watts. Now, Graham, you've come hot foot from Sadler's Wells. Why did you want to be here for this moment? Oh, this is one of the best nights in contemporary dance in 
Well, I was going to say in the UK, but I think in the world, it's a very exciting night. I love the buzz of the place prize. And you've seen the pieces earlier in the run. Have you got an inkling? Well, firstly, have you got a personal favourite? Do you want to put your colours to the mast right now? I, you know, this year, more than any other time, I think it's a really, really close run race. Um, the piece that's grown on me, without any doubt, is Riccardo Buscarini's Athletes. Uh, I wouldn't have said it was my favourite the first time I saw it, but I love the visual imagery. I also love Rick Nadine's piece. I think it's the most complete piece. It's a realised piece of work. I love Eva, Eva's piece as well. And H2 Dance, well, it's just it's funny, isn't it? So, actually, I think for the first time ever, I'm not going to be too disappointed, whatever wins. And do you have a sense who that might be? Do you have an inkling of what the judges are going to go for? Oh, I, that's so difficult to second guess a panel of judges, isn't it? I mean, obviously the popular choice most evenings has been H2 Dance, but um, I, I, if I was going to go for anything, I think the visual arts um, kind of eclecticism of Ricardo's piece might just edge it, but I, you know, hey, I don't want to kind of put the kiss of death on it. <laughs> so. You know, I, 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 as I say, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy whichever one of the pieces win. They're all wonderful pieces. So you've been a real long-time supporter of the Place Prize. In many ways, I think you're kind of the Place Prize's biggest fan. Um, can you say a little bit about what it is about the competition? Because for some people, a competition is controversial, but you seem to have really ap appreciated what it's brought to the, the work that you've seen. No, absolutely. I was going to end the last little comment by saying that at the end of the day, dance is the winner. You know, that's the factor. You know, how many pieces? 92 pieces have been made. 92 pieces of work that without Bloomberg's support and without the work of the wonderful team here at the place wouldn't have got made, many of which have gone on to have a performance life after the competition. Um, you know, people might uh, uh, say it's very difficult to have a competition for dance, but actually I don't think that's the point. I think the point is it raises the profile of dance. It gives choreographers the opportunity to get work made. And actually, whichever piece tonight is announced as a winner, they're all winners. And, and the pieces that were in the semi-finals, in a sense, are also winners, a, a number of which I'm sure will carry on and be, be performed on other occasions. Great, well, I'm really glad you think that. Now, I'm going to let you get a glass of champagne before they run out, and then we can sit back and watch you wins. Thanks very much, Graham. So, as I said, we are just moments away now. I think they're still handing out champagne around the auditorium. It takes a surprisingly long time to give 300 people a glass of fizz. Um, but I'm going to let go back now, and we can just get ready for the excitement. And this is your last chance on Facebook and on Twitter to say who you think should win. It'd be great to hear um, using, it's facebook.com slash the place. It's also on Twitter using the hashtag place prize. To let us know where your vote's going. And then in just a few moments time, we'll find out who's gonna win the place prize for dance sponsored by Bloomberg.
Hello, everybody. Uh, I keep drinking, so don't stop. Uh, my name is Eddie Nixon. I'm the director of theatre and artist development here at the place. Um, and I'm also the chair of the jury uh, for the place prize. Uh, and so I know that you all, you all really want to know who's won. Um, and you're going to find out in a couple of minutes. But first of all, I just need to say a few things. Um, thank yous, predictably, on an occasion like this. Uh, now, the Place Prize is quite a big project uh, for us here at the Place. Um, you'll have heard earlier on about the, the number of entries we get, the interviews, the commissions, the production weeks we spend here. It's a big, organ, big organising um, challenge for us. And the team of colleagues that work on it uh, are incredibly dedicated. It takes about a year's work. And so uh, I really would like to invite you to uh, join me in giving a hand to my colleagues who work on the Place Prize, because they never get thanked. And I, I also, I really want to thank the performers of the fifth piece that's been on stage tonight, uh, the one that was happening in between the others in small sections that I hope you didn't really notice. A thank you to the Place Prize technical team. Uh, now, last September, we had also had 12 other semi-finalists um, pieces you haven't seen tonight. They didn't make it to this stage of the competition. And before them, uh, as Chris and Peter mentioned, there were 192 other entries, a record number of entries for the Place Prize. Um, I'd also really like to thank all those artists for giving us their ideas. Um, if they didn't join in, it wouldn't be a competition. It is a competition, but at its centre are artists and creativity and their ideas. So thank you to all 208 people who entered the Place Prize this year. Earlier this week, uh, Maria Miller, who's the, the Secretary of State for Culture, made a speech at the British Museum, uh, and she heaped praise on the success of UK arts and culture, quite rightly. Uh, there was mention of the intrinsic value of the arts, a great thing that I'd agree with, of course. Uh, there was mention of their role in attracting visitors to Britain, of course, and their economic value uh, was talked about quite a lot. The word creativity popped up a bit as well, and it's this that I just want to talk about for a minute. Later in the summer, Punch Drunk present their new show, The Drowned Man, at the National Theatre. I love Punch Drunk. I bought a ticket within 10 minutes than going on sale at 12 o'clock about a month ago. Uh, I think I was number 2,000 in the queue by the time I logged on. It's one of the National Theatre's fastest ever selling shows. And at the same time, Punch Drunk also have a sellout show running in New York simultaneously. They are a global phenomenon, a real success story, an innovative theatre company uh, who over a decade have achieved huge international success. And back in 2006, they were semi-finalists in the Place Prize. Now, I'm not for a moment going to pretend that the Place Prize or the Place has in any way been instrumental in Punch Drunk's success. They've carved their own path. But the point I want to make, really, is that phenomenal successes in the arts often start on small stages like this one, like Battersea Arts Centre. If you look at all the big international stories in the arts, the kind that the politicians like to hold up to us as exemplars, then somewhere in the history you can usually find a small theatre or a small arts centre or a small gallery who help them at some point take that initial risk. If it's economic success in the arts that you ultimately value, then the investment needs to be maintained in the arts at every scale. It's not something the politicians want to hear, but supporting creativity is a long game, I'm afraid. So we're sitting in this theatre because the Arts Council of England give us the money to run it. And later this year, they've given us some more money. Uh, you'll be pleased to know that you're going to have more comfy seats if you come here regularly. Um, you'll, be even more, yeah, quite. you'll be even more pleased to know you'll have a slightly cooler auditorium at some point in the future. Some of you have been here before, haven't you? Um, and we'll also have a theatre that will be more flexible for artists and more welcoming to different members of our audience. Um, and and, a, and a, a building that is 
um, more sustainable environmentally. This is thanks to the Arts Council investment. They give us this money. They trust us to invest it wisely. They allow us to fill this stage year round with, brightest, with the brightest, most original new dance that we can find. And they let us play the long game that I was just talking about. This is a house for new ideas and they let us run it. And every two years here we hold the place prize and I love the place prize. Um, it's the biggest commissioning fund for short new dance works that this country has had for the last 10 years. And it exists because Bloomberg have the vision to support it. And they believe in supporting artists to create new work. Things that we can watch, think about, talk about, and in this case, vote on. But I want to thank them for this unswerving support in making these pieces come to life. Not just the winners not just the phenomenal global successes that come afterwards, but for every one of the 92 pieces that their money has helped make over the last 10 years. A big thanks to Bloomberg. Okay, so that money uh, so far has given us four winners. In a moment, we're gonna have a fifth. Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to welcome to the stage to present uh, this year's place prize, uh, Raquel Messagay, who is half of the uh, winning duo from 2011 Lost Dog, uh, together with Robert Cohen, choreographer and founder of the place. And now I'd like you to uh, join me in welcoming each of tonight's four finalists with their performers and their collaborators. First of all, Rick Nodee uh, for Dead Gig. Ricardo Buscarini for Athletes. <laughs> Ava Ricaccia for The Wishing Well. Hannah Gilgren and Heidi Ristergaard, H2 Dance with Duet. Finally, I'd just like to say thank you to, to the two jurors uh, and pay tribute to their meticulous uh, observation, their rigorous discussion, uh, and uh, all the things I learned from listening to them. Uh, thank you to Stina Nilsson, Siobhan Davis, Sarah Crompton, John Z. D., Roberta Casarotto, David Lann, Bonnie Greer, Susanna Eastburn, and Margot Heller. Um, <laughs> Now it's over to Bob. Uh, Eddie has about to say a few words, and the only thing that comes to my mind is that we're in the Robin Howard Dance Theatre, and this stage, this theatre would not exist if it wasn't for Robin before the Arts Council came in. So I think we should thank him. <laughs> Thank you. 
we got turned down for our first grant. <laughs> we also got turned down right here in this uh, area. It was, a, it was a drill hall. And when Robin signed the lease, uh, there was a table over here. All the critics were standing, people in dance. He was sitting with a couple of lawyers and everybody was having a drink like you are. And we were just, he was just about to sign the lease when a man came with an envelope and pushed it toward him and said, I think you should read this, Robin, before you sign. And it was the Arts Council turning us down <laughs> for trying to take the lease of this building. And Robin, to his credit, read it, folded it up, put it on the desk, picked up the pen, and signed the lease. <laughs> I also should mention that he brought me to start this idea of contemporary dance here, which already existed but was not organized. And uh, I was coming from a very professional world. I had been on the stage for a long time with professional companies, and I was interested in professional dancers' companies, uh, forming a company and taking it out on tour. And Robin was interested in what's happening here now, in young people, new people, choreographers beginning their, their whole artistic life. And for that, we needed this stage because it's no good. At that time, contemporary dance was in the studio. Um, in the United States, Martha Graham put it on the Broadway stage here, it was not on the stage. Ballet was on the stage. And the idea was to have a theater like this, where contemporary dance could be valid and safe. And that was the whole point of this theater. And the point of it is that we have a winner. <laughs> of the jury, I am pleased to announce that their unanimous choice is winner of the Place Prize, sponsored by Bloomberg for 2013, is Athletes by Ricardo Bustini. <laughs> Collaborators, I mean, this journey wouldn't been, would have been so great. And it's more the journey, actually, rather than the piece itself. And uh, it's been wonderful. And uh, yeah, it wouldn't have been possible without them, without these beautiful three creative monsters, <laughs> super committed and super generous and super giving and humble. And then it would have been possible without Brooke and her beautiful presence and commitment as well, uh, working like athletes all the time and just demanding a lot of, you know, from ourselves and, uh, and then giving always to the art and thank you Brooke, thank you very much and uh, it wouldn't have been possible without the beautiful lighting of Mickey Mannion who's not here, it he was here yesterday supporting and Lucy Hanson, which is a very young and very beautiful person that supported the work very much. And I want to thank as well Yeva, Dubinkaite and Gabriela, who are our makeup artists, who did a very good job and were always smiling, always supporting 
the warm up of the before the shows. And I want to thank all this team and and the people that supported us and believed in the work. And thank you all as well. Competition, it always ends with a winner. Uh, place prize also always ends with a party. Um, it starts downstairs now. Please join us for a drink, something to eat. Um, we'll be here till about two o'clock. Uh, see you in a moment. So, so there we have it. Many, many congratulations to Ricardo Puscarini. But congratulations also, obviously, to Ava Ricaccia, to H2 Dance, to Rick Nodine, to all the performers and collaborators who have entertained us over the last two and a half hours, over the last ten nights, and indeed everyone who's been involved with the Place Prize over the last year and a half. I also need to say a quick thank you to everyone who's helped with this broadcast tonight. That's directors Steve Jackman and Rosvita Cheshire. There's camera operators Marco Bonazzi and Nadia Gorodetskaya. Livestream producer Martin Franklin, to Lindsay Winship, Eddie Nixon, John T.D., Graham Watts, Rita Chowdhury on Facebook, Emma Young on Twitter, Graham McGinty and all of the technical crew here in the place. On behalf of all of them, and from me, Tim Wood, good night.